Hi everyone, this is Neil Reitert here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. We have here a patient who attended with a blocked right ear, and as you can see, I'm just performing microsuction, so using a, a gentle vacuum to suction this wax out of the ear. Uh, this patient has got an extremely narrow entrance to the ear canal, and also quite a bendy entrance too. Um, just to give you a bit of a backstory, this patient's been really suffering with their earwax. They visited their GP on several occasions who uh, just kept advising to use drops. Uh, the patient um, understandably felt that that actually made um, their symptoms worse, it exacerbated their symptoms, and that's normally the case. Once you've got a substantial buildup of earwax, using earwax drops excessively can cause the wax plug to swell up and further um, occlude and impact your ear. So uh, in uh, a moment of desperation, the patient attempted to wash out their ear using the shower head, which is a, um, something that we strongly advise that you try and avoid because you're propelling water at a, a um, high rate into the ear, which can potentially uh, further impact this earwax and jet wash it uh, uh, against the eardrum, which is unfortunately what this patient had done. So the ear is quite damp, it's a bit wet in there. Because they've used a lot of drops, the wax is a bit sticky, but slowly but surely we're bringing this through. And you can see the zonal suction probe only just really fits into the ear. The ear almost looks like a paediatric ear, so a child's ear, but this patient is um, significantly older. They're in their 80s, and I've just brought that a large plug of wax out there. So you've got a layer of skin um, halfway into the ear and beyond that you can see the plug of wax which is up against the eardrum. So that's a bit tricky to remove. I th think I'm reverting to the fine end suction probe here. Let's see because we're getting a bit of clarinetting. So clarinetting for anyone who um, who's new to the channel hasn't heard the term clarinetting. Sometimes uh, when you perform microsuction and you get a hold of a bit of dead skin, that skin begins to violently flap at the tip of the suction probe uh, and as a result it emits a very loud high frequency squeal. It's not only loud for the patient, it's loud for myself. So a fine end suction probe is an extension to the normal suction probe. We actually attach it to the end and it's got a narrower diameter. Uh, I'll come back to that moment. You can see here this patient has got some granulation tissue. Um, so uh, granulation tissue is inflammatory tissue, so you normally would find um, granulation tissue when uh, a part of your body, so, uh, not just the ear, is undergoing some form of healing. So we know this is experience and trauma, and I think it was that water. Uh, I think they also use the cotton bud as well, so it was a, a double whammy, unfortunately. So granulation tissue is just a build-up of connective tissue, um, and it has its own blood supply, hence why when you sometimes remove it, it looks quite fleshy. So yeah, clarinetting, it's best to avoid that. And one way of avoiding clarinetting is to use the fine end. Uh, you're far less likely to get any clarinetting. And if you do, it's, it's a lot quieter. So I've just curled the tip of this fine, fine end. I'm not sure if you can see that, but there's a slight curl there. And that's to help me to get into this region here. If I didn't curl at the end of the, the fine end, when I'm removing wax from the anterior canal wall, exactly where I am now, the suction probe would possibly make contact with the side part of the ear canal, the anterior canal wall, the bony section, which is very delicate and sensitive. So by curling it, it just helps me avoid that making contact. And I was a bit worried that the fine end wouldn't be strong enough to remove this wax off the drum, but as you can see, I managed to extract it. Now it's just a case of removing it out of the ear because it's such a narrow ear, as I mentioned. I think I'm going to use the bigger suction here probe here just to do that. And instantly, as soon as I remove that particular uh, part of wax with the drum, the patient notices an instant improvement in the symptoms. And um, just as well, because I think this weekend they had uh, a lot of family visiting and they were worried that they wouldn't be able to hear and engage in conversation. So I'm now just going to peel some away the skin, as you can see. You can see the texture of the skin. It's, um, it's got this ribbon texture. Uh, the eardrum is more or less visible. There is still a bit of wax, but not on the eardrum itself. It's just on the roof of the ear canal adjacent to the eardrum. But we're going to try and remove that as well. I 
think I managed to do so, if memory serves me right. And with this dead skin, I'm just using a bit of rocking motion to slowly peel it away off the canal wall. So it's quite a severe impaction. Um, you can actually see on the eardrum as well, you'll, you'll have a better view right at the end, but one of the, uh, the blood capillaries is slightly dilated. And again, I suspect that's because of the, uh, was the trauma the patient experienced when they were trying to use a cotton bud and also the shower head to flush out this wax. But that will all settle down. The skin is slightly macerated, so what I mean by macerated, it's softened because of the, 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 the excessive water in the ear. But that should be fine. I've just advised the patient to use some over-the-counter acetic acid spray to help uh, reacidify the ear. Whenever you get water in the ear, you do two things. You wash away a natural lacquer of wax that lines the ear canal. It may be invisible to the naked eye, but we've all got this very thin film, or we should have, um, the majority of us does. And this protective film of wax um, repels water, so it's hydrophobic, and it allows the, the skin that it's sitting on to retain its own internal moisture. Without that lacquer of wax, um, water within the skin cells will rise to the surface and evaporate, which then lead to dry, crackly, uh, flaky and itchy ears. So I can imagine and I can understand um, the logic behind it. If you've got, if you feel like you've got a dry ear, you get, you're, you're thinking by getting water in there, you're hydrating it, but in actual fact, you're doing the opposite. You're washing away the natural um, uh, biofilm of wax, which can then lead to dryness of the ear. And also when you wash away that, that lacquer of wax, you remove the, the natural acidity of the ear and the acidity in the ear is quite important. The acidity helps to repel insects. So it stops uh, creepy crawlies from entering your ear when you're fast asleep at night. And um, having a mildly acidic uh, pH level in the ear also helps to inhibit harmful bacterial and uh, fungal growth. So it's got antimicrobial properties, anti-function benefits. And of course, when the skin becomes soft and macerated like this, it's more susceptible for, to, tr to uh, undergo trauma. So for example, um, if I made a, a bit of contact with that skin because it's so inflamed, it can easily cut open and which would then allow further bacteria and fungi to enter. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, keep well and speak soon. Bye.